What's up? Peter Kurtenbach, Logan Murdoch. Warriors beat the Miami Heat 120-118. These Warriors hate these 5.30 Sunday games. They just do not show up for the first quarter no. ever. Ever. They didn't do that again tonight. But uh, And the Heat put in a hell of an effort. Still not enough because uh, the Warriors, they got, they got some pretty good players, man. Uh, let's talk about it. Number one on the big three, the big four. Big four. The four horsemen of the NBA's apocalypse. I thought, I thought about that one long and hard. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, it was tight. Kevin Durant, 39 points. He went 15 of 17 from two, which is uh, let that sink in for a second. Steph Curry, 25 points. Uh, had a big second quarter. He was not good in the first. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who didn't show up for the game at 530. Stephen Curry, but uh, 25 points in the game. Draymond Green, I thought, was actually pretty darn good. Uh, 14 assists, and now I have to figure out who the last non-guard to lead the NBA in assists was because Draymond Green is getting up there. And uh, Clay Thompson had a sneaky 29, which is kind of an absurd statement, but I thought he was just insane on defense. Of the four, the big four, who stood out most to you? Kevin. Um, just because he talked about this er uh, earlier um, in his press conference that you know, the Miami Heat are really, the way they play defense, it really helps him get into his mid-range bag. And for that's sure. something that he, for better or worse, has been perfecting throughout his career. And Durant attempted, like, all of the Warriors' shots in the final four minutes. Yeah. And it got to the point where the Heat, who are a very smart basketball team, knew what was coming. Dwayne Wade gets a steal, puts the Heat down by one. Next play, uh, Draymond tries to inbound it to Steph. Uh, Josh Richardson, who just had an outstanding game, man. Josh Richardson was like the second best player on the court behind Durant. Yeah. Uh, steals it, dunks it, heater up by one with less than a minute to play. And then Kevin comes down and immediately hits a three. And, and nullifies just, all of that right yeah. there. Yeah. And that was his only three-pointer of the night for Kevin Durant. So uh, pretty crazy stuff. Let's talk about the bench. This is the second thing. I thought the bench was actually fantastic night. And arguably, if you look at this box score, you would say they won the game because all the starters had negative plus-minus ratings. And all the bench guys had plus, plus, minus ratings. Uh, main guy who stood out to me, Jonas Jerebko, he's been huge in these last couple of games. He's gotten run now in three straight games. He might have stolen your man Alfonso McKinney's minutes. Uh, the load wants to know curse is real. Uh, <laughs> Jerebko, what did he play tonight? He played like 12 minutes plus 18. I mean, he just went out there and things happened. And a big reason why, just crashing the glass. And that's something that McKinney had been doing. Maybe he gets back in there. I, I don't know where that battle stands because they do seem to be fighting for the same minutes. But, uh, I, man, Jarebko has been really good these last couple of games. It's going to be tough to put him back on the bench. Yeah, and he's playing more so than he, like he did at the beginning of the season. Yeah, right? exactly. You know, he, was hitting, he didn't have the scoring low that you might think of at the beginning of the season, but he did play really well. Um, it was curious to see that he got you know got in this soon after uh, working his way back in the rotation this mm -hmm. soon after having his kid and kind of losing his blend and stuff like yeah. that. But he has. He's played really well um, over the last few games, and he showed that tonight. You liked Quinn Cook's game. I did like Quinn Cook. I game. like Quinn Cook's game. That's a that's like a novelty for me. Yeah, I mean, like, he got he got he got his shots off. I mean, he played really well down the um, down the stretch. And it was it, the thing with what Quinn Cook is, he has to get he has to get his work his way back into that rotation. Yeah, I mean, he's he hasn't played the best he could play this season. I, mean, nope. I know you've uh, kind of talked about his defense a lot of the year, but yeah. For the fact of the matter is he isn't getting the minutes he probably expected to get this year. And, right. Um, if he wants to get that, he has to play like he did tonight. I thought he was really good defensively tonight. Now, obviously, you have to hide him to a certain extent. He's just not a big enough guy. But uh, with the way that Clay was playing, and I thought Sean Livingston and him made a nice pairing because Sean is so big and so long. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot of switching stuff, and you can kind of keep Quinn on the weak side for most of the possession. If you do that, I mean, Quinn's – really, really good offensive player. The only reason that he's not a starting point guard in the NBA is because of the defense. He gives up what he gets, and if he's off shooting one night, it, it's really rough. I thought he was on point on both of those areas tonight. Him and Sean, I would like to see more of that going forward. Now, no Andre Iguodala tonight, so that messes a lot of stuff up. But Sean Livingston, Quinn Cook, I'd like to see it. Let's get into some of the bad stuff here real fast because we do need to mention it. It was a two-point game for a reason. One, the Warriors didn't show up in the first quarter at all. They were down like 24-7 at one point. It was really rough to look at. Um, some other stuff, I mean, the Heat are really well coached. We all know that. They're really disciplined except for Deion Waiters. Um, like, <laughs> sorry, some of those shots Deion had tonight were just like, what are you doing? Um, they just attacked DeMarcus Cousins in the pick and roll again yeah. and again yeah. and again. And there was just – he keeps dropping back – and there's just no rotation. And so it leaves guys wide open for three after two passes. There is a big problem with that. And I can't imagine that that's not going to be the game plan going forward because it's going to get more healthy. At the same time, 
it was always a susceptibility for this guy. It, it's rough to look at right now, and I think the book is there because we've been seeing it build to this. This is a crescendo, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's the thing that we talked about, right? He plays, he has played objectively really well on offense. For sure. It's, it's when he's gotten back. But we always, we, that was always one of the things that we even talked about starting um, in this season is how was he going to get that defense back? Or how was he going to get the, even to a we level just that Just get, get to some level yeah. of solvency. And it, it's been hard for him to do that. Granted, it's been like only a few weeks since he's been back. Mm-hmm. And granted, he has a long way to go. But that's something that we're going to have to look up closely. Um, specifically, like you said, the pick and roll. I mean, down the stretch tonight, they put Kavon in on the last yeah, possession. Put him on the last possession, um, and they switched Boogie into the corner and let Draymond guard Bam Adebayo on the final. Because they were just running the same pick and roll with yeah. Bam coming up and Richardson coming off the side. And Cousins would drop back you know, on that one. They just put Cousins in the corner. I mean, that's that's something that they're going to have to figure out, especially when you go into play in the Houstons and you yeah. know, the other teams like that. David West who they compare him a lot to, did not play in the Houston series. Nope. And that's something that they're going to have to figure out with Boogie. And, uh, because he's playing really well. He, he, he's yeah, playing you don't well want to beseech the name. Yeah. You, can, you can get him, if you can get him offensively and up to average on, on defense, he can be really good for this team. It'll be interesting to see what the Warriors do in the buyout market. I think they got to add somebody. No Andre Iguodala tonight shows that you kind of need an extra wing, mm-hmm. but then DeMarcus' is pick-and-roll defense might need an extra center just to get you through yeah. the regular season. You figure it out with sort of a Swiss Army knife approach come the playoffs. So it'll be interesting to see. And then the other thing, too, Warriors have been out offensive rebounded four out of the last five games. Draymond said it's focus. Draymond also said they're part of the – this is the dog days right now. No argument there. Two more dog days to go before the All-Star break. Should be a tough one. Do you see – okay, I, I know this is a thing, but what do yeah. you see for these last two games? Do you think that – you know, they have Utah and then they have a Portland back-to-back. Where do you yeah. see this going um, back? It's in Portland, right? In Portland. Yeah, I do not like that. Don't like it either. I, I would say that Utah comes here, they can do something. That will be an interesting game for sure. But, uh, man, I really like Portland. I'm starting to I'm starting to buy Portland stock right now in the Western Conference, mainly because I don't want to travel too far in the playoffs, if we're being totally honest. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you guys after that Utah game. Should be a good one. Peace.